Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're modeling a coronavirus in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff we don't normally go into on YouTube, and we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that'll give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can test it out and see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So we're finally back after a few weeks without any videos. I hope everyone's doing okay with all the crazy things that are going on in the world. I was actually down in Australia visiting friends and family when the whole thing started. So I got stuck there for a while when they closed the borders, hence no videos. But I'm back in London now and ready to crank out some tutorials. And I guess if there's a silver lining to being in lockdown, it's that we've got more time to work on our CG skills. So let's get to it. I can see from our Facebook group that virus artwork is pretty popular at the moment. And I know we've already done a virus tutorial in the past, but I thought we could kick things off with a nice, easy modeling tutorial. This time we're going for a more scientifically accurate rendition of a virus. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can model this guy. Okay, so we wanna be nice and accurate with our modeling. So it's probably a good idea to start off with some reference. Let's hit our middle mouse button and switch to another view. And I think I might bring our reference image into the right view here. So let's hit Shift V to bring up our viewport settings and over to the back tab. Here's where you can find an image on your computer. I've already set the path here. So now we just need to click show picture. And this is the guy we're going to model. Not sure if this is exactly what a coronavirus looks like, but this is the image the media seems to be running with. So we'll start by modeling these little pointy bits, which are apparently called spike glycoproteins. And you can see this part is pretty triangular, so that's probably a good starting point. Let's head back to our perspective view, and we can get an easy triangular shape from a polygon object. So we'll bring that in. And this is definitely not triangular right now, but if we come over here, this little checkbox will sort that out. So now we wanna be able to see the subdivision of our geometry. So let's head over to the display and we'll turn on the lines. And you can also use the shortcut keys listed here to switch between the different display types if you don't wanna keep coming up here. And it looks like we have no subdivisions in there yet. So let's increase the segments. And we want a few of these, so I think six segments should do it. And we're going to model this surface up a bit, so we need to make this editable too. We'll right click on this guy and we can come down here and choose make editable, or you could use the shortcut C on the keyboard, or you can even find that up in the top left of the Cinema 4D 21 interface. So let's just do that. And now we wanna tweak these polygon faces. So we'll switch over to the polygon mode, and now we can select any of these triangular polygons. So we might use the live selection tool to make our job a bit easier here. And that just allows us to select polygons by painting across the surface. And we can increase the brush size or radius over here, or we could also hold the middle mouse button and drag to scale that up. And now we can just paint across the entire surface to select all of those faces. So next we wanna extrude these out to give it some thickness. So we'll right click over our selection and choose extrude. And we wanna make sure we have create caps checked on here. And then we can click and drag this to the height we want. Let's try something like 14 centimeters. Normally I'd suggest modeling things to real world scale, but our virus is pretty microscopic. So let's just go by eye. Okay, let's take another quick look at our reference. We've got the rough shape of one of these triangular spikes. So let's have a go at modeling the pattern on top of these. We'll make sure we've still got the live selection tool activated and we'll just shrink the brush size down a tad. And we want to select polygons on either side of this mesh. So we'll make sure only select visible elements is off. And we'll select just the three corners of our triangle like so. And we wanna puff these out. So let's right click and we'll extrude those as well. Something like that. 
And I think we can add a subdivision surface to this now and start smoothing things out. So with our mesh selected, we'll bring in one of those. And if we hold Alt when we click on that, it should automatically apply itself. Okay, now we're getting this kind of shape. So let's crack on and extrude the rest out. We'll grab our mesh again and our live selection. Then we'll scale our brush down and select this row of polygons. And actually, let's just select the polygons on top of what we can see. So we'll just enable select visible elements again. And we'll select a rough triangular shape here. Something like that. And maybe we'll come up here and just deselect the triangle in the middle by holding control and clicking on it. Then we'll extrude these faces out too. So just right click and extrude. And we'll just bring those out to about there. And now we'll head back to the top view, grab our live selection and grab the last remaining polygons. And we'll extrude those as well. Okay, so that gives us our rough shape, but let's make this look a bit more random. Let's come up here and bring in a null and we'll drag our mesh inside there. And then with our null selected, let's bring in a deformer. And we're going to go with the displacer deformer. And if we hold shift when we bring that in, it should appear right here. But we wanna make sure it affects our mesh last in the hierarchy. So let's just switch these around. And we'll go into that guy and start deforming this mesh. Let's change the type to intensity. And over to the shading tab, let's add a noise shader. And that's starting to break that shape up. But let's come into here and refine this. Let's try bringing down the global scale. And I think we're going to need to add some more subdivisions so we can see all that detail in the noise. So we'll go back to our subdivision surface and we'll bring this right up to five. And now we can see the effect of that noise. So let's turn off the lines now so we can see this a little bit better. Let's hit N then A on the keyboard to go back to our shaded mode. Then back to our deformer, we'll head over to the object tab and let's just bring the height down to three centimeters to make this a bit more subtle. And we'll just go back and tweak our noise a bit more. And if we come down here, we could introduce some cycles to get an interesting look. Let's try changing this to 10. And now I've got loads of extra detail in here, but I think the scale might be a little bit too small. So if we bring that up, we should start to get an interesting looking result. So using deformers is a nice way to get some more organic looks without having to model everything by hand. So now that that's done, let's create the stem of our spike in the same way. Let's bring in a cylinder and we'll scale that down. And let's just go into here and tweak some of these values. And we also wanna make sure we've got plenty of subdivisions on this guy as well. And then we'll just move this down here. And we want this right in the middle of our triangle. So we'll switch views and just position this guy right about there. And that's looking good. So we need to do the same thing again here with our cylinder selected. We'll bring in another displacement deformer. And we'll add another noise. And inside that, let's just tweak some of the scaling here in the Y axis, let's try. And a little global scaling as well until we get something like this. Okay, and there is the first of our spikes. So let's grab all of this and hit Alt G to group them. And we can rename this to spikes. So now let's go and check out our reference image again. I think the next job is cloning our spikes over the main surface of our virus. So let's create that. Back in our perspective view, Let's bring in a sphere. And we'll take a look at the mesh by hitting N then B to turn those lines on again. And the plan is to clone the spikes onto each one of our spheres vertices. So we need to get our geometry nice and evenly spaced out and also get rid of any poles where the clones might cluster. So let's change the type of sphere to icosahedron, which gives us these nicely spaced triangles all over our model. And I think this should be good. So let's rename our sphere to something like scatter because we're going to use it to scatter our clones. So let's clone our spikes onto our sphere. So with our spikes selected, 
Let's come up here and bring in a cloner. And if we hold Alt when we bring that in, it should automatically be applied to our spikes and we'll start to get some clones. Now we can turn the lines off again so we can see this a bit better. Then to keep things running nice and fast in our viewport, we'll switch the instance mode to render instance, which should save us a bit of RAM. And now rather than cloning our spikes in a row, let's change the mode of our cloner to object. And the object we want to clone to is our sphere. So let's grab that and drag that into the object slot. And that's definitely getting us close, but by default, the distribution of these clones is set to surface, but we actually want them to clone onto the vertices of our sphere. So let's just change that. Okay, so now we just need to scale these chaps down a bit. And one way to do that is directly in the cloner. If we head over to the transform tab, we can just bring these scale values down. Let's try 0.2 in each axis. Okay, and we also need to change the rotation of these guys. And I think in this case, it's the pitch that we need to adjust. So these just need to be negative 90. So they're all pointing outward. And the last thing we need to do is have them offset a bit so the stems aren't so embedded into the sphere. So we can adjust the positioning of the Z axis. And we actually want these to be a little bit off the surface of our sphere because we're going to bring in a second sphere to be the main body of our virus. So let's do exactly that. We'll hold control on the keyboard and drag our sphere up here to create a copy. And our original sphere is just for cloning onto. So let's hide that and we'll call our new sphere body. And we want to deform this guy as well. So we'll bring in another displacer. And again, we want to drive this with a noise shader. And we'll go into that guy as well and tweak the global scale. And just like before, this will also need more subdivisions to capture that detail. So back to our sphere, let's crank up the segments to something pretty substantial, like maybe 500. And you can probably see where we're heading now. If we go back to our reference image, we're going for this kind of detail. And a little trick too, if your geometry is blocking your view of the reference image, you can always come up here and switch the display to skeleton mode, which will just let you know where your object is, but not be so distracting. Okay, so let's make the noise a bit more interesting on the surface of our sphere. We'll come down here and add some cycles to this as well. Let's try a value of five. And I think the height is a bit extreme. So we'll go back here and bring that down as well. All right, so we're almost there now, but that does bring us to a little issue you might encounter. If we zoom back into our spikes here, you can see they're suddenly looking a bit funny. And that's actually because back in our cloner, we scale them down with the cloner's own transform controls, which don't actually scale the displacers along with it. So to fix that, we just need to adjust the height of our displacers to compensate. So we'll bring both of these down like that and this guy as well. Okay, so we're looking good again. So now we can make sure our spikes are actually touching that surface. So we'll go and tweak that offset again. About there looks good. Okay, so we're almost done now. So let's just grab all of these and hit Alt G to group them all. And we can just call this group virus. And if we go and take one last look at our reference and zoom in a tad, we've also got these last little guys to model. And apparently these little blobs are called membrane glycoproteins. So let's head back to our perspective view and we'll model these in much the same way. First, we'll hide all of this stuff and we'll bring in yet another sphere, but we'll make this guy a bit smaller, maybe about five centimeters and we'll zoom in. We're going to distort this guy as well. So we'd better also give him some more segments. Let's just crank this up to 200. And same deal as we had before, we're going to add a displacer. And again, we'll use a noise to drive the displacement and also bring down the scale to roughen up this shape. But we don't want it quite as extreme as that. So we'll head over here and bring the height down as well. And we're just trying to get a bit of a random shape here. So it doesn't have to be super perfect. Something like this should be fine. Then for a bit of variation, let's create a second quick random shape. And this time, let's make it from a capsule. 
We'll scale this guy down to roughly the same size as our other shape and we'll bring in yet another deformer. This time to mix it up a bit, let's bring in a bend deformer. And let's just hide our other shape for a second. And we're just going to bend this guy a bit. So we'll switch on the keep Y axis length so it doesn't stretch it as well. And we'll just increase the strength of the bend. Okay, so we're also going to displace this guy. So we need to add some more segments to our capsule as well. And if we just take another quick look at the lines, you can see we're nicely subdivided now. So we'll bring in another displacer and we want this to affect our capsule after the bend deformer. So we'll move that down here. And I promise this is the last time we'll have to do this, but let's add one more noise shader. And we'll go in there and tweak the scale one more time. And the height as well. Okay. So let's just turn our other blob back on. And we'll just rename this to blob number one and number two. And now all that remains is to bring in another cloner. And we'll put these guys inside there. We're going to clone these onto the surface of our virus as well. So we need to set this to object again. And the object is going to be that same scatter sphere we made earlier. So we'll drag that in here. And we also want this to be render instances. And now we can zoom out and bring back the rest of our virus which does make spotting our little blobs a bit tricky. So maybe we can give them a bit of color so they stand out. Let's come down here and create a material and apply that to our new cloner. Then we can give that a nice red color. And now we can see our little blobby membranes. And I think we could have a few more of these in here. So back in our cloner, let's crank the count up to something like 80. Nice. But we might just want to shrink these guys down a tad. So back over to the transform tab, we can just scale them down here. And that's pretty much it. If you're not quite happy with the positioning of your membranes, you could also select your cloner and head over to your MoGraph menu and just bring in a push apart effector, which pushes them way apart by default. But if we bring the radius down and maybe the iterations as well, we can just tweak this until we're happy. And I think I'm liking the look of that. So just tidy things up over here and you've got yourself a more scientifically accurate virus. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Just an easy one this week where we get things going again. As usual, you can download the project file from the link below and you can grab the final Octane render ready files from our Patreon page. Big shout out to our amazing patrons over on Patreon for supporting the channel. And we'll be back very soon with some more complex tutorials, including our very first Houdini tutorial, which has taken a little longer to record than we thought it would. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.